Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of India Habitat Center and Mr. Binoy K. Behr. Today's talk is the 11th in the monthly series, Glimpses of Culture. The film screening today is on Celestial Dancers of Manipur. For those of you who were not with us on previous talks, I will give a brief introduction to the speaker. Binoy K. Behel is an art historian, filmmaker, and photographer who is known for his tireless and prolific output of work over the past 46 years. He has taken over 53,000 photographs of Asian monuments and art heritage and made 146 documentaries which are regularly screened at major cultural institutions worldwide. His photographic exhibitions have been warmly received in 74 countries. While Mr. Behel has doggedly pursued the documentation of art and culture across India and other Asian countries, he has sometimes faced considerable danger and even been at the wrong end of assault weapons pointed at him by terrorists it happened to him twice in Afghanistan, once in Manipur, besides facing numerous dangerous situations in the Kashmir Valley. This has never kept Mr. Behel back from his true calling of the documentation of art, and he remains deeply grateful to the government of India who have provided him as much protection as possible in unsafe regions over the past many years. This is how he has managed to make 146 documentaries and take thousands of photographs, which give a new and wide perspective to the art of India. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Benoy K. Behel speaks to us today on the dances of Manipur. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sujata Chatterjee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies. It's a great pleasure to be here with you again. My many thanks to the India Habitat Center for these uh, many occasions of uh, collaboration with the culture of uh, India to uh, the audience. My grateful thanks to Durdarshan. Durdarshan have truly lived up to their role as a, a public broadcaster by uh, sponsoring so many of these uh, films of mine, which are uh, deeply researched works and not at all in the spirit of uh, entertainment, which is uh, which has become so much the norm of uh, of uh, broadcasting these days. So I'm deeply grateful to them for having sponsored these films. Ladies and gentlemen, the ancient Indian vision sees the material world around us, the material world that we perceive around us as an illusion. This is brought to us, in fact, by the limitations of our senses and sensibilities. The art of India has fulfilled the purpose of lifting the veils of illusion to show us a glimpse of the truth which is beyond, the truth which is eternal, the truth which is full of grace. And for that reason, there have been these uh, hundreds of thousands of works of art in uh, caves, in temples, since very early times. And not only have there been works of art in these uh, places of worship, but there is also the art of dance and music. Dance in India, music in India, the a show put on a stage for people to enjoy. 
there was a social contract between the people who pursued the arts, between the people who created and presented the arts and the people of the society. And the purpose was for the artist to try to live the grace, to try to find the grace within themselves and try to live the grace and thereby portray it and try to share it with the people. A wonderful social contract, one that took both the performer and the people watching, the Rasik, away from the turbulence of the material reality, away from the noise and clamor, the confusion of the material reality which surrounds us every day. We may be able to see a glimpse of the truth which is beyond. And this over the years, over the centuries, has led to a society, in fact, which is full of music, which is full of song, which is full of dance. There is every occasion to take us into a realm of peace and joy. And indeed, of leaving behind the purely material, leaving behind the mad pursuit of material possessions to joyously, poetically enjoy the grace which can be brought to us in art. And ladies and gentlemen, one of the most beautiful places where one uh, can see this uh, social contract between the performers and the people, one of the most beautiful places of beautiful and graceful people who live this uh, life as visualized in ancient India. One of those places is Manipur. It gives me great pleasure to uh, share with you uh, the film which I made on the dancers of Manipur. Sushant, uh, uh, if, if you would kindly show the film, please. Thank you so much. Manipur, the bejeweled land, is tucked away between lush green hills of northeast India. Indeed, it has preserved many jewels of the ancient culture of India. The people of Manipur had a unique tradition of worship through the ecstasy of dance. They believed that they were the descendants of Gandharvas, celestial musicians, and they sought communion with the divine through music and dance. The ancient faith of the people of Manipur blended elements of ancestor worship, Shaivism, and Tantric cults. They celebrate the Lai Haroba, literally meaning the merriment of the deities. The festival begins with the summoning of the spirit of the deity from the water. It is a unique and joyous form of worship where the entire community comes together to express their devotion through dance. These dances are not performances, but are an essential and integral part of religious practice. Lai Harauba, you know, if we look at it scientifically, it is expressing the creation of the art. The life begins from the water. That is how it expresses. Then the belief, how the society, how man became man, then how the society was being created. These are all 
expressed in the Lai Harao. Lai Harao is a way of life of the people of Manipur. When we speak about the dances, we cannot separate dance from our lives, our worship. In fact, according to many religions, even the whole universe was created to dance and music. This is a very interesting thing portrayed in the ancient, very ancient theater form called the Lai Harauba, which may perhaps be one of the oldest living religious theater traditions in the world. In fact, Manipuris always worship their gods and goddesses to dance and music. The Bhakti cult of Vaishnavism spread throughout India in the medieval period. This believes in a very direct and personal love of the Lord. The soul of man is seen pining in separation from Him. The effort is always to lose oneself in adoration of the Lord, to become one with Him. Throughout the whole of India, this led to the blossoming of a new religious culture in which poet saints played a leading role. The 15th century saw the emergence of great saints, including Ramananda, Kabir, Vallabhacharya, Namdev and Chaitanya. The philosophy of Vaishnavism was accepted by the people all over the plains of northeastern India from the 15th century onwards. The oldest Vishnu temple in Manipur is at Bishnupur, about 35 kilometers southwest of the capital city of Imphal. It was made in 1467 in the reign of King Kiyamba. By the 17th century, the people of Manipur had embraced the philosophy of Vaishnavism. They merged it with their ancient practices and exquisite religious dances. So some people, those who know the culture of Manipur and those who studied something of Manipur, they have said, each Manipuri is an artist. Even a child, just after born, when the child is a little bit conscious, when he or she can just listen or look at the mother. So mother is to start saying, tadding. So just folding the hands in the artistic movement. So the child starts, it's like the Brazil, even a child, he goes with a football. So it's like that in Manipur, a child starts with tadding. Uh, Manipur, though it is a small state of the country, it has got enormous amount of cultural heritages. The traditional courtyard theatre of Manipur is the most popular form of art today. The Holi festival is the biggest festival in Manipur. People observe for five days the the color play there this drum is very important it's related with the holy see it started with the uh, mridanga you know now the poom the mridanga is right from the very birth of a child till the death of a man in our manipuri society there is the involvement of the drums we have you know we call it pung. There are many varieties.
Indian philosophy, it has always been believed that the aesthetic experience, when one is transported and loses oneself in the beauty of nature or of art, is an experience akin to Brahmanan itself. It is in this moment that the ego, the preoccupation with the self, appears to fade away and we truly feel that we are a part of the divinity of existence. It is in this manner that the Manipuri worshipper wishes to lose himself entirely through a complete absorption in his dance. Vaishnavism and the Bhakti cult found here a fertile ground for the blossoming of one of the most beautiful religious traditions. Manipuris reach out in ultimate surrender and devotion to Lord Krishna by losing themselves in the ecstasy of their dance. From the 16th century, we started organizing the beautiful Sankirtanas of Manipur, culminating in the creation of Das Lila during the reign of Rajarshi Bhagya Chandra. You'll be interested to know that he himself was a great artist. In the first last Leela, he played the drums himself. And his daughter, Bimbavati, the princess, played the role of Radha. And the queen was the main leading gopi. To the Vaishnavas of Manipur, the Sankirtan, including the Rasa Leela, is their worship and puja. All the important occasions of life are marked by the performance of the Sankirtan, be it a birth, a wedding, or a passing away. They lose their material concerns and are fully absorbed in the adoration of the deity. Even one's own life is punctuated with these Sankirtanas. When a child is born on the sixth day, there will be Sasti Puja, then there will be a Sankirtana. It's not entertainment, it's worship, thanksgiving. Then when a child grows up, for instance, me, when I grew up, when I was about 13, I was given the sacred treat, Upanayana. Again, another Sankirtana. Then the third Extremely important Sankirtan is performed during the wedding. In Manipur, if you go to a Manipuri wedding, you'll see that we don't go around fire. The bride and groom won't go around fire. No. Within the Sankirtana performance, the bride and groom will take these circles. Sankirtana represents divinity and we don't need fire then you'll be surprised that the greatest and most important Sankirtan happens after one's death, the Shraddh, the 13th or 14th day after death. Many people who are outside of our civilization may even find it strange that why should these people be singing and dancing after somebody has died? No, it's nothing very strange. It's worship, not entertainment. This is the greatest form of worship. We call it Mahayagna. These are, in fact, the um, greatest reflection of bhakti in a performing art, very palpable. And the whole society patronizes it. Each Sankirtan artist earns very well. In fact, they are booked all the year round because they are needed for uh, worship, for festivals, as well as for occasions like births, weddings, and all these occasions. They, they are very reluctant to come out of their land because they are respected, they earn well. 
the golden age of Manipuri dance came in the 18th century. King Bhagya Chandra, a devout worshipper of Krishna, wrote a treatise and codified the dances in the Govinda Sangeet Leela Vilas. Bhagya Chandra is believed to have seen Lord Krishna and his beloved Radha dancing together in a dream. He built the temple of Sri Govindji in 1776 and thus began the worship of Krishna and Radha which continues in Manipur till today. When it came to Ras Leela, it's one of the most picturesque, socially supported religious theatre performed only in the temples or especially erected mandapa. People don't come just to witness it. People come to worship it. It's a kind of uh, puja for them, for darshan. In this kind of an ambience, the audiences and the performers exchange a kind of communication only experienced in the actual mandapa or the temple ambience, which you cannot find in theatres. Krishna, the word comes from the root of akarshan, attraction. He is the personification of our attraction to the divine. It is most marvelous to see how Indian philosophic paths use the entire range of human emotions to lead us always to that which is beyond. There is no denial of human warmth in Indian worship. Even our feelings of love are used to take us in a seamless path towards divine knowledge. The word puja has sometimes been misinterpreted by European writers as prayer. Others have understood it correctly to mean adoration. Indic deities are adored with incense, water, milk, flowers and through music and dance. In Indian thought, the material world around us and our day-to-day -day concerns are considered to be maya or mithya, illusions. We perceive these illusions because of our limited sensibilities. The purpose of the philosophic path is for us to be able to see the truth beyond to lose our egos and our concerns in the material world. To rise up in awareness, to see the beauty of all that there is around us. To see that all is divine and therefore divinely beautiful. To lose ourselves in adoration of that beauty. One of the greatest embodiments of this exquisite philosophical quest is the Rasa Leela of Manipur. We are at the Govindji temple in Imphal. These are two little Krishnas who are all ready for the dance. Because today there is going to be a Gosta Leela which will be performed here in the Govindji temple. Manipur is one of the very few places where these early traditions continue and flourish till today. The whole of society participates in these. For every mother, her child is after all Krishna, the focus of all her akarshan, her adoration. When we worship Krishna, we worship just for the sake of worship, without caring for the result. They go to Ras Lila not to, to witness, but to 
pay devotion to Krishna. Gopis mm, uh, were just reflections of the Paramatma. They were just reflections. This idea, this philosophical idea is very, is very much there. Uh, Krishna is everywhere. Krishna is everywhere. Krishna is, is, is in the pillar. Krishna is the drum. Krishna is in you. Krishna is in me. The dances of the Ras Leela cover the life of Krishna from his childhood pranks and exploits to his dalliance with Radha and the gopis. Each dancer represents humanity's pangs of separation from the Lord and the yearning to be united with him. All humans are like the gopis, ever seeking and desiring the Lord. The playful Lord is omnipresent and dances with all the gopis simultaneously. Each gopi dances, lost in the belief that Krishna dances with her alone. Finally, the Bhakt and the Lord are united in the dance of Krishna and Radha. When a Manipuri Vaishnava goes to the Rasila, he goes to surrender entirely at the feet of Sri Krishna, to lose oneself. When a Manipuri dies, the general idea is that he goes to Vrindavan. He does not go to Vaikuntha. He goes to Vrindavan. That is the idea. In Manipuri dance, the mood or bhava is conveyed through gentle and expressive body movements rather than only through facial expressions. The dance is a continuous flow of rounded and gentle movements which blend into one another. However complicated a composition or choreographic pattern may be, there will never be a hard edge. No straight line, no angular movements, always one movement merging into another, giving a sense of continuity. In Ras Leela, in this way, both dancing and singing reflect the whole range of Vaishnava Bhakti. Don't be surprised if the audience shed the tears of appreciation. At times they come and go prostrate in front of the Ras Dhari or the Ras teacher and both of them sharing a moment of ecstasy in tears. You don't find them clapping, sh shouting bravo and this kind of a thing, they don't do that. It is believed that the ground upon which the Rasa Leela is performed becomes Vrindavan. The Bhakts keep and treasure the dust which has thus been made sacred. The statement of Krishna, Na ham vasame vaikunthe, na yogi hridayecha, mad bhakta yatra gayanti, tatra shishthami narada. This is what Krishna said. I don't stay in Vaikuntha. I don't stay in the hearts of the uh, yogis either. Wherever my bhaktas are singing, I'm there, Narada. Bhakti may be explained in many, many different ways. And uh, of course, all the Vaishnava Sahitya literature will go through very extensive deliberations, you know, uh, compositions and uh, arguments those are for scholars, but for a simple bhakta, just fall in love with God. I believe that Manipur is certainly one of the very few pockets left on this planet where the essence of human civilization and culture is preserved 
not only by the artists, by the whole society and artists together. This is extremely important. In a world where everything is commercial and where very, very popular art aimed at pure entertainment and nothing else is bombarded to our senses through all the electronic medias. Time that we sat back and thought over it and find real sensitiveness, sensibility, which touches the heart, which touches the mind and uplift us. Gopis are lovers. We are all Gopis. And Krishna is the only Purusha. We are all Prakriti. Because after all, we cannot think of God in a very abstract way. Many people do that, many Jnanis do it, but we Bhaktas do not do that. We personalize it. Because we are human beings, we can only think of human terms. So as humans, if I have to love, I have to love somebody. So my choice was love God, why not love Him, fall in love with Him. Nothing is more beautiful than Krishna. The whole world is inside Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Sushant, for an excellent screening. Ladies and gentlemen, some philosophic paths may find our emotions to be a distraction from the philosophic quest. Not so with Indic uh, philosophy. Indic philosophy recognizes the power, the enormous range of emotions that, uh, that we have, and the power of love, and how that too can be used, can be channelized towards helping us with our reaching out towards the divine. Mind you, always in the Indic vision, it is the divine which is present within us. That is also something very important to remember. But it is wonderful to see how akarshan, attraction, is personified in a deity. A deity we love, a deity whom we passionately adore, a deity in whose beauty, in whose charm, in whose grace we lose ourselves and unleash all the resources which are within us to be able to pursue wholeheartedly the, uh, and vigorously the uh, path, the search for the eternal truth. This is all a form of yoga, bhakti yoga. The whole purpose is to take us away from the distractions of our egos, the distractions of the material world, to take us to that realm of grace, as uh, Guru Singhajit Ji says so well. Fall in love with God. What a marvelous thing, to lose oneself in such a pure and beautiful emotion. And how wonderful that the greatest of distractions, the greatest of love, which we feel for our children, the deepest of love, the final uh, frontier of attraction, of attachment, which we are unable to give up, even that is taken 
in this seamless path to take us towards an understanding of the divine. And we are presented Krishna as baby Krishna. In fact, our child is after all Krishna. And we love our child. It's a wonderful path where through our love, we are able to appreciate and see the divinity which is in all that there is. I must admit that uh, the simplicity and depth with which the former principal speaks uh, in the film is something that I find personally so attractive. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a joy to share all this with you. And I'll be very happy to answer uh, questions if you uh, may have them. May I request uh, Sujata to please uh, come and uh, take uh, questions and put them to me, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, while we are waiting for the questions to be generated, some comments which have come in from an iPhone. There's no name here. What an experience. Thank you, Sri Benoit. My pleasure. Thank you. Swati Goel, thank you so much for this enlightening and beautiful discussion from the scholars of Vrindavan, Braj. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Koda Nambutripad, wonderful. Great learning of their spiritual journey, all lifelong and in depth. What a wonderful mm. idea. Thank you for sharing that. Well, while we are waiting for questions to come up, maybe we can announce next science program. Our next offering will be on 23rd of July. The film is called Grandeur of the Lord. This would be about early Chola temples. Same time on a Saturday. So kindly mark this in your calendars that we would love to have you all with us. Is that a question? Oh, Rukmini Day to everyone. Thanks for the beautiful movie. Is there a connection between Manipuri dance and Cambodian dance? Definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, all uh, dances uh, of the Indic tradition are deeply connected. And the most basic uh, and important uh, connection in them is that they're all meant to transport us through grace. In fact, there is even uh, there are even uh, deities who are personifications of grace, such as uh, Vajralasya in the Indic uh, tradition. And uh, you have uh, pointed out uh, one of the most uh, beautiful, one of the most graceful forms of uh, dance that there is. Cambodian dance can be so exquisite and so beautiful. In fact, uh, in my uh, uh, documentation and film on the tradition of uh, Ramayan, which I shot in uh, uh, 10 countries, I must say that in all the countries, the most exquisite, the most beautiful, the most graceful uh, dance with which the Ramayan was uh, enacted was in uh, Cambodia. Thank you very much. Arun Bhargav was Amphor Vat Vishnu Dham. <coughs> Ankur Vat was one of the uh, greatest of uh, the temples uh, uh, that there was. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there is only uh, one known uh, precursor to the great uh, Angkor Wat uh, temple with uh, multiple towers. And that is uh, uh, in uh, Himachal Pradesh, Masroor, a few centuries before uh, the Angkor Wat temple, a rock cut temple cut out of the mountain at Masroor, which has uh, multiple towers. And uh, this is, in fact, the uh, last form of temple which is described in the Vishnu Dharmotra Puran. Thank you. 
Swati Goel, sir, are there any monastic traditions related to Manipuri Vaishnavism? Uh, I will have to admit that uh, I'm not uh, uh, so aware of uh, monastic uh, traditions of this kind. Thank you. But I, I would like to say that the principal form of worship of the Manipuris is through dance, whether it is the Laya Haroba, uh, which is uh, truly ancient, or whether it is the uh, Rasa Leela, which uh, we may have all enjoyed uh, seeing so much. But the marvelous thing which uh, the Manipuris do is to give this importance to this form of uh, this form of expressing and uh, uh, appreciating grace, dance, music, and dance, which allow us to which allows us to be carried away to that realm of uh, grace and lose ourselves in it. In fact, uh, as uh, Guruji also mentioned in the film, even marriages do not need uh, do not need a fire around which the couple will go. They will go around the sankirtan. So this is truly uh, a very important and amazing uh, importance, a clarity with which uh, the importance of uh, dance and music in the ancient Indian traditions is presented and how this is so deeply connected and such an important part of the philosophic uh, path. Thank you. This is a comment, not a question from Sharmila Agarwal. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to listen to words of wisdom from you. I learned the use of kind and graceful words from your lecture. God bless. I must say that it is very, very generous of you to say this. Thank you. I think that's about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you all uh, once again. It was a joy to be with you. My thanks again to Sushant, to India Habitat Center, and to Sujata Chatterjee. Thank you. On behalf of India Habitat Center and Mr. Benoit Kebehel, I would like to thank all of you for being with us tonight. Goodbye and good night. <laughs>